Well, you should. Don't you keep, don't you keep track of your hours? Uh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> Anyhow, cell type uh, ice. These cubes, guys, they're made. I don't know what they call dice cubes or cube ice. Um, typically, these cells this is a side way view of um, the evaporator. See this slope slightly down? Mm -hmm. The water is sprayed over here. And at the back here, and it's um, equidistant. These are the refrigeration coils. All right. So water sprays here. And believe it or not, if, even though this has a slope down, there's something called capillary action that pulls that water right down to the back there. And it starts freezing here, <coughs> and it starts to build up. And it starts filling that. And it does the same thing here. And it does the same thing here and here. Now we see when that ice fills up flush with the front, we allow it now to go one eighth of an inch more so that there's a front sheet form and bridges all these ice cubes in here. All right? So it's like, imagine I have individual ice cube there and I put a sheet of ice so that all of them get stuck to this sheet. Mm -hmm. All right? That's so these ice uh, sell. And like I said, the bridge is um, one eight inch right up to three sixteenth of an inch if you choose to. Okay. But we normally start at, um, I would normally set it at about one eight inch and take it from there because that bridge thickness, I call it the bridge, it is adjustable. All right. Now without that bridge, the ice is not going to drop individually from these here when it goes to harvest. It's going to sit there and melt. The bridge allows it to develop weight gives it more weight so that as one begins to let go, it pulls on all the rest that's behind there. Eventually, the whole thing falls as a whole piece, and just the distance it falls, break it up now into individual pieces. So it is all dependent on bridge, ice bridge size. Of course, the water level in this reservoir is also controlled by a float switch. And if for some reason this bridge thickness fails, remember we told you, I told you about the batch making? Yeah. Then when this water level drops where the float is no longer sent touching water, then it is going to initiate a harvest because it's, it's seeing that here I'm out of water that means I, I have ice here, but something is wrong. I'm not going into harvest. So it goes into harvest. And it just melts that uh, thing. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, the <laughs> on it, quick. Sit on it. I always, I always knew the world. You know, you guys remember Hal 2000? 
where the machines become smarter than people. Yeah. 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 God, you just prove it. <laughs> you know what? If you, if you ask the iPhone, if you ask the iPhone 5, you say, Siri, tell me about how. And she says, I do not like to talk about how. <laughs> Read to the machine. And it, um, where, what the heck was I talking about? The, the bridge, if the bridge doesn't form, that... But the ice float not Yes, if the water. ice float. So what happens to when this has to go into its own, when the machine has to initiate the frost without the sensor doing it? It's going to do that three times. The third time it's going to shut down. And then, of course, the idiot light will blink and tell you, listen, I exceeded my harvest time. Machine did not go into harvest. I exceeded a uh, long ice making cycle. My ice making did not go into harvest. And now you're going to find out, try find out, well, why didn't this machine go into harvest? And here's where you have to turn this machine on and sit there and oh. play. What was that fancy music, Mr. Charles? <laughs> <laughs> you play that idiotic mu music just to waste time, you know? So, so now you have to find out there why it didn't go, and then you find out, you know what? My, um, my ice thickness or my cube size control is not taking the adjustment. It's probably nasty. So, here's how it works. See how, okay, I have mine as backward, they have their script. Sorry. Well, water flows here, these have sloped downwards. See how the ice begin to form? Capillary reaction pulls that right there and pulls that up and pulls it up. Yeah, now you see how this is starting to extend over the edge? Yeah. And you'll see, see how it's filling up, right? Now, this little thing here is what we call a, we really in the field we don't, very rarely do we call it a bridge sticker. We call it an ice, ice thickness probe, right? There is normally a little set screw here that as you screw in, it brings us out and the bridge thickness will be thicker. And as you back, back it up counterclockwise, this goes in, the bridge thickness will be very thin. You do not want to, um, you do not want it to go in where it kisses the Metal. evaporator. Because then the individual <laughs> cubes will not drop out to that machine out of the evaporator and you will end up with a ice you know, problem because some will melt from up here others will stick on there and when the ice making cycle begin it's going to form double the amount and eventually form one block of ice and in order for you to troubleshoot this thing you have to melt all of that ice off and sometimes the ice right here is the reservoir it's made out of plastic that ice builds up expands, oh, okay. and cracks plastic and not to say you can get a plastic reservoir, but you know, it's a pain with some of them to change it. So now you practically have to buy a new machine to change that because the amount of parts you gotta remove to get at that and to separate it from the machine, it's really not worth it. <coughs> So, this is the sensor, you see how it is here? Mm -hmm. We wanted that thickness. I don't know how that translates, but it's about a um, one eight anyhow. And what this control does, guys, this is a stainless steel plate. This is a plastic housing. This stainless steel plate is hooked up either to two wires 
that goes to the control board or by one. Now if it's two wires, when the control board sees that I have eyes touching both because I'll be getting a, it's like I close the switch yeah. now, I'll be getting continuity there on that too, right? So it's going to tell the board, hey, I am ready to harvest that and if it sees that condition for 10 seconds, it's going to go into harvest. If it's a single probe, this probe will sense to ground. Because this, if it's a one, if it's a one, if, it's a one uh, if it has one of these sensors instead of two, this will sense to ground. Right. And it will tell after 10 seconds again, if that condition stays constant, it's going to tell the machine I'm ready to harvest the ice. It goes into the harvest, uh, liquid line solenoid de-energizes, hot gas solenoid opens, condenser fan cycles off, water pump uh, cycles off, dump valve opens. You know, in some cases the water pump stays on dump valve open to flush the whole system out. Or like in the case of my Hosazaki, the water pump reverses itself to flush the water out. So, I service initiation. Hot gas. We need hot gas um, solenoid because it is a hot gas defrost. This actually is a defrost cycle we're going into. And remember, I told you guys, if we go, if we use hot gas defrost, we definitely need to put a suction accumulator because it's going to condense and yeah, evaporate. Yeah, because that evaporator becomes a condenser for that um, that three minutes period of time. So we don't want that. What do they mean by the water being too pure? I know you're going to ask me that. Now remember I told you that the sensor goes to ground, it sees ground. So it needs yeah. minerals in the water or something? It needs impurities. Yeah, it needs to sense the... Right, because if it's a single sensor... It won't go to ground. It wouldn't go to ground, yeah. so the machine can't see that it has eyes. If it's a dual sensor, it can't shoot, it can't close, <laughs> because <coughs> even though it has eyes there, the machine wouldn't, would see an open circuit, all right? Remember, only pure, pure water freezes. The impurities, water does not conduct electricity. <coughs> Let's base everything on that, right? It's the, it's the stuff water that's does in. not conduct electricity. It's the stuff that... It's the impurities in the water that does. Ah. Okay? So that's a, <coughs> that's a concept here. So you do not want water that's really and truly too pure in there because it's not going to do what it's supposed to do. And water that's too pure can damage your machine because it's going to initiate electrolysis. With the eddy current. Right? Yes, you're going to get, um, that's going to chew out because it's going to be, if it's ionized, it's going to, um, so, now, how do you think this machine knows that the ice dropped from off of the evaporator? Yeah, and there are quite a few different type of sensors. Um, a lot of them, the sensor is the rise and mechanical. No, it's the sensor is mechanical movement because in front of the, the evaporator, there's normally a water court in that prevents. When you pump in the water, it prevents it from spilling and getting into the bin. So it directs back all that water back into the reservoir. So when you harvest, 
that cartel will have to move away for the ice to drop. Based on that principle, they put a switch behind the curtain. So when the curtain, when the ice drop, it pull the curtain away, and as the ice go right down into the bin, the curtain close back. When it sees that open close, it goes back into. That's the signal for it to, to go make, into and um, start making more ice. making more ice. Because when the curtain open, it automatically switch into the um, shutdown mode for the harvest, and as soon as the curtain closes. It goes into the ice making mode. The curtain, in some cases, also acts as the bin switch, con bin fill control. Because if there is a switch on the curtain and the curtain stays open, it, it's going to tell the machine, listen, when this curtain ain't closed. Therefore, I, I either um, have a defective curtain, a defective switch, or I'm filled with ice. <coughs> Now, these machines, they do have the same type of controls to maintain high, maintain desired head pressure, fan cycle control, and of course, you will have high pressure safety switch with them. Because it's very easy for these machines to get out of hand sometimes if the condenser coil is blocked up. Very. So, high pressure control, if you exceed High safety um, limits is shutdowns. Low pressure control, you lose refrigerant, it's going to shut down. Now, I did talk to you about reverse acting low pressure switches. Yeah. It closes, these open on a drop in pressure, these closes on a drop in pressure to initiate harvest. Okay, so that's what these do. They only, um, the only manufacturer that uses this is Manitoba. Scotsman has what we call a reverse acting thermostat, low temperature thermostat. And these guys have the pressure switch. So, you know, if, um, if needed be, you probably, if you know what you're doing, you could probably switch the operation. Once this these contacts close, it goes into harvest. And these are these are um, they're they're kind of phasing these out now. These are the, are the older style ice makers. They're phasing it now because everything is going solid state control, so they don't really need that. Yeah, it's a. Now this may sound kind of contrary to you, but if you really want to check the charge on an ice maker, if it has proper level of charge, the best way to check it is during the harvest cycle. Okay, and um, all you need is your gauge. You don't need to weigh it because normally ice machine will be. Below freezing, which is <coughs> below 32, right? Mm -hmm. It has to be to make ice. If we go into harvest and pass hot gas through the evaporator, it has to be above 32 in order to drop that ice off of that, release that ice, right? Yeah. So if you go into an harvest and your, your manifold gate set is reading a pressure that is higher than the 32 for that specific gas you're using, you're probably right in the, ball, the, the ballpark, right? You're not, don't go knock yourself out to say, hey, I need more gas. Uh, so you watch it. You watch it in the harvest mode, yeah. and if it goes above 32 degrees, yeah. 
you're right in the park. Yeah. All right? But it has to be above 30. If it stays below 32, yeah. even though it's in harvest, you can add some charge into it and <coughs> bring it up past that 32 degree mark. And you know, the, that's one of the little thing, tricks you can use to check on for a pr proper charge. See where we use reverse acting. <coughs> so, microprocessors, of course, this through the sequence of operation, guys, um, they're factory set. Now here's where, for those guys who love to um, kind of come and sign in the class and then disappear, if you don't know electrical guys, I suggest you really learn it because everything is solid state. Everything is solid state now. So you need to know what input you need to read as well what output you need to read from those boards. You need to know which one is out of out of um, out of limits and what to do to correct it. So you need to know whether it's your input that's bad, whether it's your board that's bad, whether it's your outputs. And it's pretty you know, some of the some of the guys out there the very first thing when the machine started misbehaving Guess what? The very first thing that go change, they figure it's a board. Oh board. Yeah, off the top of their head. <laughs> the board is bad. <clears throat> change the board. And it, could just, it could just be a sensor. Yeah. They spend one hour going and get a board and come back to the facility, put it in and it does the same thing. <laughs> then when they when they really look, they look at the I sense a control, the cube size control, it's rusted. It's, well, not really rusted, it's stainless steel. But it has a coating of um, algae and what have you build up and um, kind of rust from the water. Yeah, so, that, that green coating stuff. Yes, and yuck, that yucky stuff. But um, the thing is, lucky for us guys, the board has what we call idiot lights. They flash to tell you exactly what they are detecting. Some of the times they will actually tell you if the sensor is bad. Other times they'll put you in that general area of where that sensor is. And a lot of times they do give you, you can look at what this machine did for the last 1,000 cycle. If you want to go back that far. Right. Because it more or less store, if there was a fault and you cleared it, it's going to store that for 1,000 cycle before it clears it out. Or if it doesn't have to, if something else comes up along the same line, that fault overrides whatever was in memory and it's going to replace the last... Uh, the last fault with a new the one? La the last diagnosis and... Um,
स्टील गैस में इसका नया है सिलेंड्रिकल स्टाइल आई या दिस इज दिस इवैपोरेटर गैस इस really and truly kind of like no different in construction to that except that um, this one has Of course, that's a cylinder, right? And it looks like that. Okay, refrigerant on the outside, water on the inside. So, water comes in here. Refrigerant in, refrigerant out. Of course, of all things, on this system, harvest, initiation and harvest is dependent on the pressure of the water coming into this thing here. See, as water flows in the center of this here, the refrigerant, that's your evaporator, Ice starts build up on the inner wall, and as ice build up on the inner wall, you're, res you're restricting the flow of that water, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you will have a back pressure that's building up, building up on that pump, and when it builds up to a point where only a little water is uh, peeping out there, coming out here. The pressure sensor in the water line senses it and it initiates harvest. Now, in this case, when this initiates harvest, the water pump still keeps running. Push the ice and down. once the ice start melt, the pressure of that water just pushes the ice straight up. And it goes into a cutter. If you want to cut it, it goes into a crush. Crush it if you want to crush it. And um, they have switch you can make half your bin with crushed ice, half with the cut up little cylindrical tube in the ice. Oh. Um, some of those we are distributors, so you will see that cylinder yeah. with a hole in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how it's made. So we realize there is application for this. And you know, it's a simple system. There's a place out in Southampton has a fish market out there. North Sea Road, I think that's where it is. There's a McDonald's right next to them anyway. Um, they have the same thing, but they make crush ice for their fish. It's a fish market. They make they, crush ice. They crush it. Yeah. Yes, it comes on and there's a machine that starts up and crush the ice. Yeah. But anyhow, I will stop at this and give you a yeah, turn on them. Uh, can you turn it back to the fish, please? Thank you. <coughs> Right, right. Oh, fucking listen to me, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs>